Well, friends, the Internal Revenue Service has just released a shocking announcement. Millions of low-income Americans are currently eligible for a one-time stimulus check. This payment may be automatically deposited for many Americans. But friends, there is a deadline that is coming up very soon that you need to claim this additional stimulus relief by. So make sure that you watch until the end of this video because I will be covering how you can receive this stimulus payment. Also friends, I am giving away four $75 Walmart gift cards every week. Please enter the giveaways by clicking and liking several of my videos and then commenting below the keyword of each video that you watch. The more videos that you comment on, the greater your chances of winning the giveaways. And to say thank you so much for being a part of this community, I'm giving away surprise $200 gift cards for those of you that have been in this community for several months now. And the giveaways will be during the months of October, November, and December. Now friends, here is the breaking news. The government's internal watchdog reported today that as many as 10 million individuals may still be entitled to receive a crisis stimulus payment. The Government Accountability Office announced in a blog post that Americans with little or no income who are not required to pay taxes have until November 15th to complete a simplified tax return. This is in order to receive their stimulus checks. So throughout the crisis, IRS and the Treasury Department struggled to get crisis relief payments into the hands of some individuals, especially those with lower incomes, limited internet access, or who are experiencing homelessness. Based on the Internal Revenue Service and Treasury data, there could be between 9 to 10 million Americans who are eligible and have not received those payments. The Government Accountability Office found that people who do not have to file tax returns first-time filers, mixed immigrant status families, and people experiencing homelessness were among those likely not to have received a payment that is owed to them. Over the course of several payments delivered through legislation and acted both under former president and the Biden administration, $931 billion went out to Americans to help with the economic fallout from the crisis. However, the U.S. Government Accountability Office describe this process as very challenging for the IRS and the U.S. Treasury. Many in the tax world have come to the defense of the IRS over the course of the crisis, saying it was beyond the call of duty for a tax collection agency to become the primary administrator of emergency economic stimulus payments. But analysts say that the added duties for the IRS have led to a backlog of tens of millions of unprocessed tax returns and unanswered phone calls that have left millions of Americans waiting for their annual tax refunds. The extra pressure may also have resulted in stimulus delivery shortage for up to 10 million Americans. A recent spending package from Democrats is set to give the IRS its biggest funding boost in many decades, with $80 billion going to the agency in the next 10 years. While more than half of that will go towards increased enforcement efforts like audits, around $33 billion will go towards operational support, services for payers, and systems modernization. Friends, the keyword for this video is Buffalo, New York. If you would like to enter today's Walmart gift card giveaway, please click and like several of my videos and then comment below this keyword, which is Buffalo, New York, and additional keywords of any video of mine that you watch. And friends, do make sure that you're also subscribed to my channel. So friends, today the Biden administration offered a preview of the Student Loan Forgiveness Application website, which it described as short and simple, ahead of its launch expected later this month. In August, President Biden announced his decision to cancel up to $10,000 in student loan debt for individuals who are earning less than $125,000 a year or as much as $20,000 for eligible bars who are also Pell Grant recipients. Officials said the website will be live later this month and applications will be open through December 2023, but declined to provide a specific launch date. 
A senior administration official told reporters today, We've worked really hard to make this application simple and straightforward. We kept the number of questions to a minimum and designed it in collaboration with user testing. The form to apply includes information on the debt relief, who qualifies for it, and how it works. The Biden administration also said that the vast majority of borrowers, nearly 95% with qualifying loans, meet the income requirement, adding that there will be strict fraud prevention measures in place. Borrowers must have federally held student loans to qualify. Borrowers whose federal student loans are guaranteed by the government but held by private lenders, many of which were made under the former Federal Family Education Loan Program and Federal Perkins Loan Program, are currently excluded. Individuals who earn less than $125,000 in either 2020 or 2021 and married couples or heads of households who made less than $250,000 annually in those years are eligible for up to $10,000 of their federal student loan debt to be forgiven. The income thresholds are based on adjusted gross income. After submitting the application, most qualifying bars are expected to receive debt relief within a few weeks. Officials said that the goal is to begin to receive the debt relief process ahead of next January when student loan payments will begin after a pause. Well, my great and amazing friends, that is the end of my daily stimulus update video for this evening. Thank you so very, very much, friends, for joining me here every day when I post a video. I'll be announcing a winner for the Walmart gift card giveaway in a video later today. So please enter as many keywords as you can in the comment section below of each video that you watch. And do make sure that you're also subscribed to my channel. Thank you, friends, and have a wonderful, blessed day. Make sure that uh, we were we give you all regular updates, and that's what you're seeing uh, right now. Uh, last week, we shed more detail on our efforts to go after scammers, so we were very transparent and, and showed, out, showed our policy and what we would do in that regard. Uh, this week, we're, we're giving everyone a preview of what the form would look like, as you just let, say, laid out. And we know that a lot of you were curious about what it would look like so we did that so we're trying to be transparent we're trying to lay out how this process is going to work uh, in in short uh, a, a you know the form is 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 simple it's easy to do it should take less than five minutes to complete and it'll be available on mobile and des desktop this month and we'll continue to provide regular uh, regular updates look it's it's just taking it's taking some time but the Department of Education is very much focused on this, and uh, as soon as we have uh, as soon as we have information on uh, when uh, that date will be uh, for uh, application sign off, we will share that. But again, we've tr every week we're trying to share additional information for all of you because we know how, how the curiosity, not just for all of you, but also the bor borrowers out there who are uh, who. Are we learned last week that August's annual inflation rate was a staggering. 8.3%. By we, of course, I mean everyone except Joe Biden, who boasted on 60 Minutes last night that inflation has not spiked. If the worst inflation numbers in 40 years isn't a spike, I don't know what is. Unfortunately for Mr. Biden, the numbers don't lie. That 8.3% inflation is costing families well over $4,000 this year alone. It's essentially wiping out one month's paycheck. I don't know a single family that can afford that kind of sacrifice. Worse, real wages have fallen every single month since President Biden's $1.9 trillion stimulus passed last year. But it's not just today's taxpayers that will feel these impacts. Generations from now, people will still be feeling the sting of Biden's inflation crisis. Over the next decade, decisions made in Biden's first two years will add $4.8 trillion to our federal deficit. $4.8 trillion. Decades of lower interest rates have spared the federal government from facing the true costs of borrowing at such high levels, but today's inflation has forced the Federal Reserve to raise interest rates. We are quickly approaching a point where the interest alone on our federal debt will overwhelm our federal budget, resulting in dire economic effects. One percentage, one percentage of higher interest rates would cost the federal government $400 billion every year starting next year. 
Just 1% rise in the interest rate cost the federal government $400 billion in extra interest. That's on top of what we're paying already. That's money we could spend on national defense, health care, and other of the many priorities our nation faces. But instead, we're paying interest on our debt. Interest payments will pass defense spending by the end of the decade. They'll pass Medicare by 2046 and Social Security by the midpoint of the century. As the Federal Reserve continues to raise interest rates to combat inflation, which will likely happen again this week, this only gets worse.